You know, everyone's everyone's all excited about this GTA 6 thing. And you know, not now, Lester. Always when I'm trying to talk. Everyone's excited about GTA 6 and man, it's just not calling to me. I just I just don't seem to care. Just don't don't want to know about it. Don't care if it never comes. Now that might be an unpopular opinion, but I'll bet you it's not as unpopular as you think. I'll bet you there's a lot of people who can relate to that. Now I'm gonna give you seven reasons why I don't care about GTA 6. So here are three Eudoras. And here are two Eudoras. Why do I have seven Eudoras? It's because they're cool. I mean, I've got three of these that haven't even been modified yet. Haven't been touched. Got seven Eudoras across two characters. Why? Is it because I'm, it's like a lucky number thing? No, no. Is it because they're really cool? Well, kind of. I mean, they're not super fast, but they are really just shut up, Lester. They are fun to drive. They're really cool to look at and they have a lot of customization, but why seven? Why did I buy so many? Because you can't buy them anymore. Because of fear of missing out. Because of FOMO. They made me get all these cars because if I wanted to do another one, if I came up with an idea, I wasn't going to be able to do it. I wasn't going to be able to build another car unless I bought them all now. So every single one of these that I got, I got at once in one week because that's when they were going to be available. And yeah, somewhere down the road they'll probably release them for another week. Put them in some kind of weird rotation. But you know, if I wanted to build a car, and this this was one car where I wanted to have the availability to do a build on it whenever I wanted. So I bought a bunch of them. Now what does this have to do with GTA 6? Well, they, they tend to develop Whatever they're going to do for GTA 6 and GTA 5. I mean, I think we're probably going to see that with some other things, but I think FOMO is going to be a big part of GTA 6. I think that, you know, everything's going to be on some kind of rotation. I don't know if we're going to have a whole lot of regular stuff available. In that. I think it's going to be, here's what this week is. You'd better be playing nothing but GTA 6 this week, or you're going to miss out on whatever's going on, and you'll never see it again. Or you'll still see it somewhere down the road, but like, you're going to have to. No, we're not talking about you right now. We're going to have to constantly be up to date with that game, just like we are with GTA 5. Constantly watching, you know, the YouTubers. What's going to happen with GTA 5 when all the YouTubers switch to GTA 6? That's another interesting point. How are we going to find out what the FOMO on GTA 5 is? Will there still be a FOMO? Will they still rotate stuff? Is this their plan? Are they just going to set up a program to rotate these FOMO cars? And that's all you're ever going to get once they start going GTA 6. I'm not looking forward to any of that. And I got my Eudoras. I love my Eudoras. But this is not improving my GTA 5 experience. And GTA 5 is what I care about, not GTA 6. So things are not improving here. And, you know, it's just... If GTA 6 is going to be, you know, this constant burden where you're always trying to find, you know, the latest car on what's on the FOMO, never see it again kind of thing, it, it makes me wa not want to invest any time in it. I have a ridiculous amount of hours in this game. And I've never seen that before. Never noticed this before either. Right next door to that. Across the street. The finest organic and free range teas exploited from the third world. <laughs> Cockatoo's nightclub. San Androgyny. Swallow Los Santos. You see, what we have here is humor.
stuff, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm tired of all the so-called vegetarians and vegans in this state. I only eat raw meat. If you come back to my show and call me a fraud, I'll eat you raw. You understand? I'll cut you open, I'll gut you open, I'll eat your thigh, I'll eat your calf, I'll eat your stomach muscles. Who's this? Uh, my name's Owen. Owen, I am not here to become betwixt you and your lady troubles. I am here to talk about rodeo and gunsmith and then fertilize of the herd. No, please, Dwayne, 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 Dwayne. I, I beg of you. you. You have to help me, man. She's freaking going crazy with those itty bitty rhinestone kids. You know that they put down stairs above their, their intimate venue. It started with hearts and cute shit, but then she got out of control. She does these huge mural special holiday ones, right, with woodland seeds, with pocket squirrels. I just can't take it. Seriously, I can't stand it. It ain't right. Are you with me, right? I mean, that ain't right. Am I right? Owen, put your woman back on the phone this very instant. Uh if I had a wife, they'd have their way with her. Now, I've thought about that a lot. If you know what? I'm going to tell you what's maybe tyranny, I would like that. Okay, I'll tell you what's tyranny. Recycling wastes more energy than it saves, and it is disgusting. There's talk of making composting toilets mandatory in some parts of the country. Old Fernando. Fernando, he knows the true liberal have the money and the guilt, and that is who I am. Who I want to be, the rich hypocrite with the guilt complex, like you, Sue. Listen, Fernando, I'm from a middle-class family that worked hard so that I could eventually marry an obscenely rich man, and then tell women out there to stand up, stop complaining, and make something of themselves. Getting them grilled shrimp and that rice stirred with the vegetables and stuff, and the guy puts the onions on top of the and makes the onions into a volcano, doing tricks and stuff with the damn food right in front of you, like a damn food circus. You got to consume the culture, Cheryl. Consume it, literally, spiritually. Uh, consume the culture, Cheryl. That's what makes us spiritual by consuming bits of other people's culture and then holding it over the heads of others less spiritual than you. You understand? I just don't see how watching goldfish in a trash can is spiritual. So, just in a block here, a lot of effort was put into the detail of just the humor here. They drive that, oh my goodness. Drove him into the tree, rolled him over. Oh, he's fine, he's fine. There is a lot of humor put into this game. And humor is a very touchy thing in 2023. People don't like it. We're, we've lost our sense of humor in this country. I mean, there's... Everyone takes everything seriously, and you, you can't... You cannot joke about anything. Or anyone. It's, it's, not, it's not acceptable. Douche beer. See, that's how people are going to react to Huber. It's just they don't, you know, you, you you can't, how can you have a GTA game without it being really warped as far as having a warped sense of humor? I mean, you can do it. Beautiful brainless beachwear from the same company, Swallow. Um, Are they going to get taken apart by the woke crowd? Or will they play it safe and simply not do this? I mean, that's going to be something where they may plan to say, all right, we're going to take a lot of heat, but we're going to do it anyway. Look at that blue dot showing up so far down the line. They may say, all right, we're going to have something called Tinkle. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe if you're just doing very general sexual euphemisms, you can get away with it. I don't know that you can... Like, I don't know, if you have the trans bar, are you just representing people or are you having humor? Like, I, at their, what some people would say is at their expense. I don't know. I don't know how you interpret the sensitivities. I guess it's open to whatever interpretation. Hey, that's the trick. Humor is open to interpretation. 
so. It's an odd selection. So it's like, how do you, how do you regulate humor? The Ring of Fire Chili House and the Lucky Plucker. Are they going to be able to do this humor in GTA 6? I think it's going to be toned down. I think they're going to have to tone some stuff down. I mean, there may be some hope. Maybe GTA 6 will still be a bastion of political incorrectness. I mean, it took a lot of heat back in the day for all of this. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not hopeful with the way things have been going as of well. late. It's a good thing this doesn't have to go on, come in and attack. Um, yeah. So I mean, you know, if GTA 6 doesn't have. The GTA brand of humor. Is it going to be GTA? Is it just going to be more serious? I mean, that's, that goes to a whole other problem, which is... See this guy? This is Nico Bellic. This is GTA 4. And Nico, I think you can tell by looking around here, his present, pretty miserable. His past, pretty miserable. His future is absolutely screwed. So, in this game, spoiler alert, you got two possible endings. You got to either take the advice of your fiance or the advice of your cousin. Whichever one you take, whichever, whoever's advice you take, they get killed. If your cousin gets killed, your wife leaves you. So, yeah, you're better off getting your fiancé killed on your wedding day because it's just, you know, at least your cousin will still hang out with you. There is humor in this game. Obviously, there's comic relief, but the overall plot, very dramatic. Very heavy. Very well done. Very well written. But there's just no... There's no way out. It's not a happy ending kind of thing. As far as the overall main plot line. The overall plot line is drama. And, you know, what are they talking about for uh, Six? You know, some kind of Bonnie and Clyde kind of thing? You know how things ended up for Bonnie and Clyde? Badly. So, yeah, that, that drops my interest. On. I stopped playing Four when I found out there was basically no way to win. Because, yeah, you could finish the game. It's what you have to figure out what you want to give up. Who do you want to get killed? And I was like, eh. No, no, I'm not into it. Someday I may actually, you know, go through this. Apparently, all the stuff I did is lost from the, the Windows Live days. So, you know, I don't have any saves. So it's going to be a starting over kind of thing. Anyway, if I ever do that, it'll, if I ever do, it'll be content. It'll be on the channel. But, Yeah. That's the, this is kind of affecting my, my view of GTA 6. The fact that they can't r probably do all the same kind of humor that they used to do. Not without some serious repercussions. And the fact that they seem to be going towards a more realistic bent for the whole thing. If, if GTA isn't silly, then it's really dark. Because, I mean, it's, it's criminal enterprise kind of stuff. I mean, it's... You're doing terrible things. If you take a realistic look at that, uh, it's not real happy. That doesn't mean it's not valuable. It doesn't mean it's not artistic. It doesn't mean it's not well done. Everyone basically thinks that GTA 4 is a better game than GTA 5, as far as the, you know, the single player. Better story, better, you know, in all ways, shapes, and forms, that kind of thing. But... As far as what do I enjoy, yeah. I'm, this is too heavy for me for just relaxing on a Friday afternoon kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of, you know, realism. See this thing? 
This is the Entity XXR. It is the poster child for advanced handling flags, which are supposed to make the car driving experience more realistic. So, for instance, normally in real life, cars do not go faster when you go over curbs. And neither does this. But, this is a video game, and it is fun to go faster when you go over curbs. It's just, it's a fun thing to do. It's an interesting and fun game mechanic. As opposed to needing a mechanic if you hit a curb. This is just not quick compared to other cars in the game. And when I won it, I did not buy it. I hit it in an underground bunker. Because it was never going to be something that I was going to take out and cruise around with. I don't even think I've done any modifications to this. It hasn't been touched. Like, we won it, it got placed here, that's it. No interest in it whatsoever. And that's also why I don't own an Entity MT, because it's the same car with a different body, for the most part. But they haven't given up on advanced handling flags. They keep putting them on cars and refining them. And I think in GTA 6, this is what your driving experience is going to be like. Maybe even more realistic, maybe more realistic damage. Maybe they'll go full BMNG on you, in which case, um, yeah. You know why we don't drive around wildly in real life? Because you'll get you killed. And so you're, not, you're going to end up having to, you know, follow the rules of the road if they do this. I mean, if they make it real, really realistic. And they're, they're already, you know, going for realism with the limiting the number of weapons you can carry. And they'll be visible. And, you know, very, very similar to Red Dead, I guess. I don't play Red Dead, so I don't know. But at least that was what was in the leaked content, which may or may not be real. Well, if they're going for realism, again, uh, that takes away a fun element for me. This is a video game. I, I'm not hot for it to be a, a simulation. You know what really screwed that balance up in a completely different game? This game. This game right here. And no, I haven't played it in a long time. And I don't even have it loaded. And I'm not even sure I want to load it. I don't even want to try this just yet. Because the last time I played this, uh, other than the fact that the frame rate was completely awful, and I don't believe they've done a whole lot of optimization on it as of yet. I know there's been updates. It's still in alpha. Now, to give you an idea, when I specced out my computer, it was to play this game. This was going to be the game. This is one of the biggest disappointments I've ever had as far as video gaming is concerned. I did finally get to fly the ship around, and it's extremely accurate. It's one of those kind of thruster-based sort of things and it's extremely difficult to aim the guns and doing anything it's just very easy to crash into stuff it's too accurate it's too realistic it's not nearly as much fun as the game i wanted it to be which is microsoft freelancer now you can't really see that the ships are inaccurate that they're not realistic in Microsoft Freelancer because it's so far into the future. But what you can say, quite definitely, is that they're a lot easier to drive. Now, you can put them into a realistic mode. Like, I'll show you that. But, like, all I have to do is aim with the mouse, and the ship goes where I want it to go. If you want to go a little faster, you hit the thrusters. That's a button. Now, if you want to tighten or widen your turn, you can use a strafe key to, to affect that, and you can see that effect there. You see, I'm still just drifting a little bit to the left here. If I want to hit what they call engine kill... Now you're in realistic physics mode. So you have the option, but then you hit the button again, and now you're just driving along like it's a car. Your guns are not fixed. You don't have to aim the whole ship. They're, they're all turrets. So you, all you have to do is put the target on the tar your target reticle on the target, and you'll hit it. 
So, you might think, well, gee, this game will be a lot easier, therefore it's boring. No, because there are options, like engine kill, that make yourself more difficult to hit and more difficult to predict. So on the one hand, it has a very low level of, you know, entry skill required, but you can develop skill uh, to become, you know, more deadly in combat. Now, it won't really affect you as far as the NPCs are concerned. They're, they're all easy. But, you know, unless there's a lot of them. But as far as p PvP, it's great. Still the best PvP experience I've ever had in any video game ever. Freelancer, no question about it. Now the game's from 2005, 2003, actually from 2003. I was, I think I started playing PvP, you know, doing online stuff Stop. in 2005. So that's what I, make, I, I think about 2005. It is the year 2005. But 2000, this is a this is a 20 year old game. It still holds up really well. I grant you, I do have a couple mods loaded here to make it prettier and like you know, the plant spin and stuff like that. They did some things to finish the game. Which is apparently something that, you know, Robert Space Industries has trouble with because, I mean, this game only got published because Microsoft bought out Digital Animal. And so, when the creator of Freelancer, you know, Chris Roberts, was going to start building Star Citizen, and I thought, wow, a modern day Freelancer with better graphics, that'll be great. But that's not exactly what they're doing. He's making this really cohesive, massively perfect rendition of what space will be in the future, which is a great idea. More power to him, but he's been working on it for, what, eight years now? Like, again, when I spec'd up this computer, it was for Star Citizen. This could, My computer is eight years old. I don't know if it'll still run it. But that's a separate problem, though. The point of the matter is that the gameplay, from what I've been able to experience is not as fun because it's too realistic. You need to you need to make it a little bit simpler, a little bit get 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 that, you know, entry level of fun down. You, so you don't have to master the game before it's it's a lot of fun. And uh, I that's what's going to make the game take off. That's what made Freelancer so good. You could do expert level things with this. But you didn't need to. I I think that's where GTA 5 is so popular because you can just cruise around at, at maximum speed and cruise over curbs and your car goes a little faster. And the racing, if you hit something, your car is going to survive for a lot of it. The lack of realism in, increases, you know, that, that arcade level of game fun. That's what I'm looking for here. That's the terminology I think I'm looking for. You want it to be more arcade than simulation. As far as that's what I want out of GTA 6. And I think it's going to be more simulation than arcade. If it's available at all for me. Which brings me to... So here we are down at the car meet. And look what we have here. We are completely surrounded by no how special works kind of stuff. We, we don't have that yet. PC is being treated like last gen. And I'm not sure they're not going to treat it like last gen in that they're not going to even come out with GTA 6. They say they are. I think they say they are. But as I recall, didn't they delay it for, uh, for GTA 5? Didn't they give the consoles the, the leg up? They let them get it first for like a year. I mean, I think there's some contracts they usually do with Sony and ironically enough Microsoft that the consoles get the game first. And, you know, as this PC's not going to be featured here, and I'm, I'm willing to bet that's what's going to happen. I, I, I'm not getting a PS5 for this. I'm not saying I'll never get a PS5, but if I was going to just right now plunk down a thousand bucks or eight hundred bucks, whatever the heck it's going for, it's some silly amount of money, or something to let me play a game, it would be another PC. Or be upgrades or repairs to this PC. All right. Not gonna be a PS5. Now, 
to see if I ended up getting the PS5 for like, you know, the kids or something like that. Yeah, I'd get a copy of the game, maybe. But I think we have to remember that for Rockstar, the PC experience, as far as GTA Online is concerned, has not been happy. No, no, it's not happy. I'm in an invite-only session. You know why? Because probably if I was in a public session, someone would be pulling me out of here into their apartment so they could just blow me up repeatedly. It happens. There's a lot of issues. Which makes me wonder... So what's going to become of this world? Now, you'll notice in my videos I've always described them as being GTA 5 Online. Because that's what this is. I mean, there is a GTA 4 Online. This is very much related to GTA 5. This is the online version of GTA 5. This world exists because of GTA 5. But Rockstar doesn't call it that. It calls it GTA Online. They separated the two games. They made a point of that. So now, if there's only going to be GTA Online, if there's only going to be one GTA Online, what happens when 6 comes out? I mean, how are they going to integrate the two together? I mean, is this going to be one world you could be in and then there'll be a whole other map with, what, better graphics? Are they going to up the ante on 5? Are they going to get rid of 5? I think, is this all this going to go away and then there'll be a new GTA 6 where all of the time you've invested in all of the stuff you've gotten and all of the property and all of the cars just disappear and you start fresh? Not interested in that. I'm not interested in that even a little bit. Now what happens if they say, oh no, well, you'll still have this map, it's going to be an upgraded map with better buildings and the cars will be the same but they'll have, you know, advanced handling flags. So everything's more realistic. I don't want that changed. I don't even want the better graphics. This is what I wanted to look at. I'm not interested in change. Yeah, I know, yeah, fear of change. But I've invested, I don't know, what is it? 12,000 hours or something in this game? A lot of it's idling. A lot of it's not. This is, this is the world I want to hang out in. This is where my stuff is. You know, Los Santos in GTA 5 is a place for me. It exists in my mind. And I have stuff there. And there are things I do here. And this is not something I want to see either A, deleted, or B, supplanted. What if they say, all right, we're going to upgrade the game to GTA 6 levels? You get all the same stuff, GTA 6 just, you know, will my computer run it? Do we even know that? There's going to be some computers that drop out. There's no question about it. I don't see anything good happening for me from the, you know, as far as GTA Online from the arrival of GTA 6. You know, are they going to build in better anti-cheat? They haven't practiced yet. They haven't done it with GTA 5. Usually they be like, again, the car is behind me. They all have advanced handling flags. Why? Because... Well, actually, is that the XF over there? Or is that... I don't even know which one it is. But the whole point of the matter is they experiment for GTA 6 by doing stuff in GTA 5. And so far, anti-cheat, not a thing. So are they even going to try? I, I, I don't... I don't... I'm willing to be surprised. I'm willing to be pleasantly surprised, but I don't have any excitement about this. I like my stuff. It's just that pure and simple. See all these cars? If there's a GTA 6 online, well, all this pretty much goes away if I go over there. I have 50 cars in this garage alone. Between all the floors and all the levels. And levels and floors are the same thing, so what am I even talking about? 
I'm talking about years spent acquiring properties to keep cars and then filling those properties with cars and then getting more properties so I could get more cars and just collecting all kinds of stuff. Cars I use for holiday specials and clothing options and weapons, all kinds of tools that I use to make videos and I've got comfortable using to make videos. Helicopters and yachts, underground bunkers, and submarines. I mean, here's my Hoobie's Garage Garage, and I've got, you know, another one for the Grand Tour. I'm, you know, this stuff that I've built up over the years out of sheer silliness. And I haven't just done this with one character. I've got two characters loaded up with garages and cars and facilities and drug labs and all kinds of different things going on here. I've got, you know, rolling acid labs and the terabyte thing and, I mean, you know... A pair of oppressor mark douches. I mean, I've got a lot of time. I've got, I think, 12,000 hours in this game. 12,000 plus, pushing 13,000, which is a lot of idling. I'll, I'll grant you that. But I've got a tremendous amount invested in this game. And I don't want to start over. And I know I'm not going to want to start over because I have the same situation with Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. Fallout 76 is arguably the much better game and a lot of things. Well, I mean, no. You can't really say that. It has more new content that I could be exploring, but I'd rather knock around Fallout 4 where I've got all of the stuff built up already. I've got all kinds of settlements and my characters established and I've got an explosive shotgun that I could kill anything with. You could say, well, you just like it where it's easy. Well, maybe. Maybe. Still what I like. So given the opportunity to start over again completely in GTA 6, and I realize there's a lot of people who say, look, I'm, it's too easy, I'm too rich, the point of playing a video game is to play. But sometimes the point of the video game is just to have a place to go to in your mind. Where you're just hanging out. On your yacht. On your yacht. I mean, come on. You don't want to give this up. I, mean, I know I can't feel the water, but you know, in my mind, I'm just here on my yacht. Maybe I only go here every once in a great while just to sit, look at the mountains. But it's nice to know that I can. And I know that someday all this will disappear. They'll, they'll shut down the GTA 5 online servers, it's inevitable. It may be in a year, it may be in 10, who knows. That's probably one of the reasons I do all these videos. So that this place can still exist in some way or fashion. Now I like my stuff. Don't want to give it up. And GTA 6 is nothing but a threat to that threat to my stuff because you know they're going to want to put all the resources into the next game and then we'll spend hours and hours and hours you know, working on GTA 6 and building ourselves up to the same point oh well then GTA 7 will come along they'll wipe it again the one thing I do hope is that at some point they, they make a way so that you can take all your stuff offline you just play off you know keep it on your computer Maybe there'll be a mod. I guess right now my only real hope for that might be 5M, if 5M stays alive after all this. Maybe it'll be even bigger, but you don't get everything. You can just make up what cars you want as you go along. But is it really yours at that point? Has it got the same feeling? No, I'm not looking forward to GTA 6. Well, no, maybe a little bit. Don't hit me with them negative waves so early in the morning. <sighs> so what does this mean? Does this mean I'm boycotting GTA 6? No. Nope. If it's available for PC, I'll probably pre-order it. Back in the day for GTA 5, I, I ordered it on Xbox 360 because that's what uh, I had. Even though I only had a regular television, it couldn't really play it. It was unplayable. 
without, you know, some kind of high-def television. But that allowed me eventually, when I transitioned my character over to PC, I bought this game twice, to get all the first day kind of stuff, you know, the Duke of Death, the free cars. Will I do that now? No. I'm not going to get a PS5 version or an Xbox One S version for a, you know, a system I don't have. I did have a 360. I think. Yeah, I did. I mean, I'm still an enthusiast. I still have hope that it won't be any of the things that I, I just told you. But as far as being excited for it, nah. Nah, we'll see what happens. I'm open-minded enough to think that maybe it won't suck. Or I'll put it to you this way. I think it will be really impressive. I think it will be a tour de force of gaming. I just don't know if it's a game I'm going to want to play. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night.